Hi, welcome to the second video of this series. In this video, we will understand about virtual machines and physical machines and how these two are different from each other. First, we'll understand what are servers. Then we'll move to what are VMs and physical machines. We'll try to take an example of a real life scenario. Then we will move to a scenario or an example related to software or IT industry. Then we'll understand what's the problem in physical machines that we need to reach to virtual machines that is inefficiency problem. Then we'll understand the most important part of all this is hypervisor. So without wasting any time, let's start the video. First, let's try to understand what are servers. In general, a server is a machine that serves you something. So if I'm using this laptop and this machine is serving me some purpose, we can call it a server. But in general terms, we usually call a server that is if a website is hosted on it, if an application is running on it or and we are sorry, not or and we are able to use that application through that server. We are making a request onto a machine, but basically machine, your hardware, that is called a server. If it is serving a purpose, if it is serving some application, some website, anything, that's called a server. I hope server part is clear. Let's move to what are VMs and physical machines. So by the name of physical machines, it's clear that's the computer or the machine that we can touch, we can feel and the hardware part. Okay. What's the VM? VM stands for virtual machines. Virtual machines are an logically created machines that acts completely as a separate unit. You can run your OS on it. It has its CPU. It has its memory. It had a graphic card. But in reality, it doesn't exist. It somehow is taking use of the actual physical hardware and through a hypervisor, we are able to create a virtual machine. Now let's try to understand a real life scenario and through that scenario, you will understand a very important term in all this virtual machine concept that is virtualization. So let's try to understand that real life scenario. Now imagine that you have a piece of property okay and this property is of let's say two acres now you are using a one acre of land uh, just mind my drawing let me draw it again so you are using this part to live and some part of it as a parking some part of it as a park or greenery and this is your home, home part, the land which is you are actually using. So it's a property that you are using. Okay. Now you can clearly see that although you have this two acres of land, you are sufficiently using this one acre to fulfill all your needs. Cool. Now this rest of the land is unused. Okay. Now since this is unused, we can say that we are not using our property in an efficient way. So how do you use it in an efficient way? You will build uh, another small home here. You will create a parking here. You will create some park or greenery or you can grow some vegetables here. You can create a playground here and you rent this. Okay. Now you, you rent this part and you earn an income through this rent. 
so now we can say that yes i am able to fulfill my needs in this much part of my property and the rest that was not used that was inefficient now that is being used by someone else i have built a property here so that's a more efficient way of doing things okay so that was a real world example the land was wasted the property was wasted now imagine a different scenario the software scenario so let's say we have these three servers okay each of these servers uh, let's say it has uh, 8 gb ram 4v cpu it also have 8 gb ram 4v cpu similarly this now i have deployed this application here onto this server and i have named this as a dev server similar application i have deployed here and called it as a testing server similar application here in the third figure and call it as a staging server now uh, let's say this application here it requires only 2 gb of ram now what is happening is that when we create a server we are paying some cost to any cloud provider or even if we are not paying a cost we are buying it from some company name as mainly ibm or hp these companies they deal with the servers okay but since this app here you can see is using 2 gb of ram i have an abundance of 6 gb in ram and let's say this is using two cores of cpu so i have four cores of cpu with me in abundance similarly for this machine similarly for this machine now we can clearly see that just to run one application for the three different teams we have created three different servers and in each server we are not completely utilizing the total capacity of each server so you can clearly see that this is an inefficient way. this is not the efficient way to do things now comes the concept of virtualization now comes how do we make sure that our servers are optimally utilized and the very basic answer to this is virtualization so what is this virtualization virtualization is a simple step through which you can create logical units on a single hardware let's see how that works let's say we have this machine here and we have a 16 gigs of ram and 8 core cpu what i will do is i'll put a i'll i'll install a software on this hardware on this hardware i'll install a software that is generally called as hypervisor and this hypervisor it enables me to create a logical unit on this machine so what we can do is we can create a machine on this machine that will use 4 gb of ram two core cpu second machine machine two third machine and fourth machine each of these machine will be using 4 gigs of ram two core cpu 4 gb ram two core cpu and you can see that the resources that were cost 16 gb they are divided into four different machines these machines are logical not physical but they completely work as a entity or a unit okay this first machine m1 will not interfere with m2 
or M3 or M4, they are treated as an independent machines. And that is the job of hypervisor. So we have different types of hypervisor. We have hypervisors that we directly install on the hardware, on the firmware level. We have hypervisors that we usually use in our personal laptops or machines like Oracle VM that allows us to create a virtual machine inside our existing operating system. So another advantage is that all these four machines have their different OSs as well. So we are efficiently using our resources. So that's all about VMs, physical machine, virtualization and hypervisor. And I thank all of you to watch this video. I hope you learned a lot from this one and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.